Hey everyone, Dave Hathaway. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss real estate investing and building wealth. I wanted to get right into it today because it's a very important topic and it just happened to me two days ago. So I thought it was very fresh and very relevant for investors of how to deal with the surprise charge, how to avoid these things when you're working with a contractor and all of a sudden, they send you an invoice and you go, wow, that is crazy high. How did they come up with that number? They're ripping me off. How, how do you deal with that up front? And how do you communicate with the contractor to make sure that you're not stuck in that situation? And I'm going to give you the example of what actually happened in this scenario. And then I'll give you some tools of how you can deal with it how you can know if it's gonna happen, and then the best way to kind of move forward from that situation. So this is what happened. We have, <clears throat> ideally you have all your investment properties in one location, so you can always work with vendors that you like, know, and trust. But there are scenarios <clears throat> just like us where we have the majority of our properties in Baltimore, but some of our properties are more like one-off properties, or properties that we purchased in a previous location um, that are not close to that central market. So we can't use the, our main contractors that we use on a daily basis. So in this scenario, we <clears throat> have a property in Woodbridge, Virginia, and we got a repair request from the tenant that said, hey, I need the screen on my front door, security door placed, and it's broken, it's missing. Additionally, what was funny to this one is we've had this tenant, or she's been with us for four plus years, she's a great tenant, and our assistant asked, hey, you know, how did it break? And, and she mentioned, and I always find it funny with tenants, they said, when I moved in, there was this small piece of tape on the screen somewhere, I paid it no mind, but, that's the reason why it's broken and it's just kind of funny because that tenant's been there for for four years obviously you know she would have mentioned if it was broken before so obviously there it was broken in a different way but neither here nor there she just has a screen that needs to be replaced it's it's missing she sent us a picture or a video which we often recommend you do for any repair requests that you get, but she sent a picture and just, or I think she sent us a video with her hand going in and out showing that there's no screen in the security door. So all we had to do, just like replacing a window screen, replacing a screen for a, uh, a door. Since we don't have preferred vendors that we've used a ton in that area, we had used one contractor previously, I don't know, six or eight months earlier, and we had a good experience with them. It looked like the communication between the tenant and the communication between the virtual assistant or property manager was great. So we didn't have any inklings of like, hey, this contractor is gonna charge us egregiously or rip us off. So we sent him back out, said him, here's the work order. It's just replacing a screen. And then after he goes out there, he sent us an invoice of $200. Um, so you might think that's really high. Maybe you think that's fine. But for me, my immediate thought was $200 just to replace a screen. There's not really any skilled labor involved and the first lesson that I want to go over here is you always want to see if there's anything else that was done. So when somebody sends you an invoice and says, hey, I repaired the screen, say, okay, was there, did you do anything else? Was there anything else other than the screen that you repaired while you were there? Because often what happens is maybe a contractor does a bunch of things, they don't put it on the invoice, and you're thinking, wow, this is ridiculously expensive invoice, but maybe they cocked the bathtub or did a bunch of other things and didn't put on the invoice. So it's it's totally justified. And you go, oh, okay, the tenant wanted those extra things, totally fine. I'd appreciate if you have approved that with me prior to doing them, but that's great, I'm glad you did it. I'm glad the tenant's happy. So that's the first thing is just ask them if they did anything else, because a lot of times it's just a miscommunication error. So they did extra stuff you didn't realize you're thinking it's just this one small item so that solves that problem you just ask them and they say oh yeah i did xyz or the screen door was loose or i had to get a new handle for hardware because that was broken that's number one if they say nope i just replaced the screen everything's great tenants happy i'm moving on my day then i'll i'll, I'll really go into a little bit more of like their system or their process and this is number two you want to ask contractors if they have a service fee or if they charge an hourly fee for smaller jobs. And often 
in the past, I, I have realized when I ask this to some contractors, and you can kind of tell which ones don't have a process. And, and that's, you know, that's okay. They'll just be a little bit harder to work with if they don't have a process. And one of the things that you want to do is you want to help them become better contractors because they're going to be more useful to you and you're not going to have these crazy surprise invoices. And to help them, you, 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 know, you ask them if they can, okay, well, what do you think would be a reasonable uh, service fee if you just come out there for five or 10 minutes? What would be your, your, your standard charge? Uh, maybe this is 75, maybe it's 100, maybe it's 120, whatever it is, but just so you know up front so there is no surprise. And maybe you're okay with that, maybe you're not, and you have to find a different contractor. But also maybe an hourly fee. So if it's something that, hey, they do a bunch of small things, instead of them going from their gut and them just coming with a price, you'll have kind of this standard to fall back on. And the conversation that I usually like to have with contractors is that I never want to have a surprise invoice. It's not good for any anybody because I'm thinking that I'm getting ripped off and then I'm trying to negotiate with them. They're thinking that it was fair. That's why they gave it to me in the first place. So from that place, it's never a win-win when there's a surprise. So it's nice just to have a standard that we can fall back upon. Um, so that's usually the conversation that I have. Often, if a contractor is really giving me a lot of pushback, they'll say things like, hey, I have a lot of employees that I have to pay. Hey, gas is really expensive. Hey, the truck and my overhead is really expensive. I'll hear that from contractors that don't want to give you like an hourly rate or a standard. And those, I mean, they're not really great. You know, they're not really great uh I don't want to say excuses, but they're not really great building blocks and they and they don't they don't address the problem. <laughs> Their problem is, hey, I don't want to have a surprise invoice. Now, whatever <clears throat> you want to have a higher standard fee, that's fine to cover your your truck and your employees and your other stuff. Fine. You want to have a higher hourly rate, that's fine. I just want to know and to create that transparency so you're not surprised when I say this is too high and I'm not surprised when you send me over the invoice. So you're making, again, that win-win scenario. Sometimes contractors still will say, no, I'm only pricing by a job, and then you'll have to determine, hey, as an investor, maybe I can't work with you because I can never quote anything else. Uh, I can never quote anything out on, on a project. The other scenario that you can, how you can handle those contractors is you can say, that's fine. We can work together. Unfortunately, once you get to the project, I'm always going to need an estimate before you start. So I'm not surprised at the end result. That will also determine, hey, great. You're going to charge me 200. I'm okay with that. Or I'll negotiate prior to you doing the work because the issue comes in is the work's already been done. The contractor thinks, hey, this was a fair price. And you think, hey, that's not a fair price. But the work's already been done. So you guys are both in bad footing. So again, we're trying to, to create that win-win that scenario. We're trying to set them up on a system or a template so we know in the future. You know, Again, we'll do a, a brief summary. Ideally, you have a service charge and you have an hourly rate for all small handyman work. That's the ideal scenario. So if ever there's a question, you can, they can just go, well, I was there for three hours and that's why I'm charging you you know, $210, $70 an hour. Totally fine. Or I was there for 10 minutes and I'm charging you 150 bucks because that's my service fee. And that's totally fine as well. But just getting them to that point to have that template in the process is gonna help you tr immensely as an investor. But if, if you can't get them there, which some contractors just they're just I'm by the job and that's their only thing well then just doing the estimate up front and approving that estimate prior to them doing the work so hope that helps guys if you want to learn how to invest in real estate like and subscribe to the channel we'll share how we do it and you can too see ya